One final thank you to Untold Tales for sponsoring. They do have still their 90% sale going on. Please do go check that out. All the information is in the description. Hello everyone, welcome back to Switch Up. Uh, I hope you've all had a, a lovely break and a happy Christmas. We've got a couple of videos coming for you in the next few days leading up to the new year. In this first one, we're going to look at the games that got the highest score for each month throughout the year of 2023. And in the second one that will come out soon, we're gonna look at the games that got a 90% or higher throughout the whole year. So just to give you a nice comprehensive overview of basically the, you know, the best games that came out in 2023. All right, well, what are they? Let's find out. Do please go check out their Untold Tales publisher sale. It's still on, but it does end very shortly. It's 90% off. Grab one of those Untold Tales games. Tell them that it was worth us uh, being sponsored. From Glenn and I to the whole Untold Tales team, Merry Christmas. All the way to January then, and the game that got the highest score for that month was Persona 4 Golden. Yeah, now this is interesting because obviously we had Persona 5 come out first, and I would say that's probably the more loved of the games, but then Persona 4 and 3 came out at the same time, and I think Persona 4, is it fair to say, is the more loved of those two? Oh, I would say so. Yeah, I think there's a lot of lot of love for yeah. Persona 4, and it again, it, it just holds up very well, you know? It, it does the Persona thing yeah. very well, that, that model that's obviously been carried across into 5, and um, it's a game that people wanted for a long time on the Switch. I'm surprised it took as long as it did to finally arrive, you know? Yeah, it's what I class as a PWT, RPG. PWC, play with Tiramisu Salata. <laughs> no, but you should. <laughs> no, I class this as a people with time. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, it just is a time eater. Yeah. Massive, massive, lengthy dialogue scenes, you know, like about someone's toothbrush. <laughs> and you're like, okay, all right then, <laughs> I've got to go to work now, kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'll make you right. But for those with time, yeah, that loved it, it got a switch up score of 94%. Not bad for the first month of the year. Not too shabby. Moving into February then, and another RPG, as it turns out, we had Octopath Traveler 2. Yeah, it's really nice that this is on here because it's just not getting the mentions that it deserves. And I, I think I said this in another video, I think that's more to do with its release time than its release quality. Oh, yeah, 100%. In terms of quality, it's it's right up there, as uh, obviously, as the score will show in a minute. Um, and it didn't make our best games of the year, you know, our very subjective favourite games, but that doesn't take anything away from the game itself. You know, it does everything that the first Octopath did. It has that lovely art style, the HD 2D, as it's called. Um, and I think, actually, this one did a better job with its ensemble cast. You know, it, I think it tied everything uh, together, sorry, much better than that first game did. Had a great combat system. The story was genuinely interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I thought so anyway. I liked the way that you could kind of flip between the characters you had and then go and play like a prologue to introduce a new character rather than them just being plonked on you so many hours later in. But it, for me, it just made sense too because you got to know that character better, you yeah. know, before they joined you. Yeah, the Trials of Mana game had the same thing and I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. This is a lovely game. It really, you know, it does enhance or, or build on what the first game did. And yeah, it got a switch up score of, of 93%. Then we've got Vernal Edge, which was a completely unexpected release from a smaller team. Uh, it took the Metroidvania in a slightly different avenue. It had elements of a, a classic PlayStation game. Um, it just did everything really well. I, I very much enjoyed it. I didn't find the frustrating moments we so often talk about um, were hugely prevalent. Obviously, there's an element always of getting lost and things like that, but the combat was snappy. The story was what actually, and I guess this is the way it should be, it hooked me quite quickly. Yeah. I was like, okay, that makes sense. All right, I'm not sure I agree with the character's motivation, but I get it. Um, and then I wanted to find out how that played out. So yeah, very good. It's had a couple of patches and yeah, really worth adding to your collection if you've not heard of it. It got a switch up score of 89%. That takes us into April, and within that month, you had the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters that came out. Obviously, you could buy them separately, um, but there was a bundle that you could you could purchase too. Um, physically, it had, I believe, it did have a release or a limited release in North America. Otherwise, you were you were looking at the Asian market if you wanted to pick it up because uh, you didn't get one over here at all. Did it not? No. So where can you get that? You can get it from Play Asia. Oh, oh goodness! I, I do believe there is a link. <laughs> 
down below if you're interested. You get yourself five percent off there. Oh wow! <laughs> but aside from that terribly shameless plug, um, I mean, this is a if you like these games, and there are plenty of people that do. You know, this is a great way to play them. You've got it's one through to six, okay, which span across the Nintendo and the uh, the Super Nintendo, of course, from back in the day. The only criticism I read in the comments, which I thought was a little bit a little bit of a stretch, was someone saying that they couldn't move diagonally on one of the games. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I do think that's odd that they didn't do that, and we didn't pick up on that in the review just because mm. we we just didn't walk diagonally. <laughs> we just we know, but no, I think it's a fair point because these days it's just such a quality of life yeah. feature to to not include. But they have done a lot with the the graphics. You know, there's a lot more detail now that you'll maybe not notice on first glance unless you are an absolute student of the original games. You know, but when yeah. you do compare them side to side, you can see the effort that's been put in. I feel we should cut to a picture of us walking around the corner in straight lines. <laughs> exactly, just walking 90 <laughs> degrees for the rest of time. Uh, but this is definitely worth picking up if you love those original games, and it got a score of 88%. In May then, we had a, a little game from a small team called The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Hmm. And uh, everyone and their nan was playing it. Their nan was probably further than them because she had more time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It was uh, more, wasn't it? It was more of everything. It was the same and it was more. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly right. Uh, but it was it was more than I expected mm. the more to be. Do you know what I mean? I knew it was going to be great because there's no way they were going to balls it up. But <laughs> I didn't expect them to, you know, I didn't expect the sky and the underground and I certainly didn't expect the crafting system, if you, if you can call it that. Was it a crafting system? Yeah, or? I think so. You could craft and... and but it was a physics-based crafting system, wasn't it? Yes, and that's what, you know, when you hear crafting system, I'm thinking of making, you know, you just go to a, a workbench work and you... Exactly <laughs> right. I wasn't expecting to be picking bits up and... Yeah. and pushing them together and then rolling it down hills uh -huh. you know carriages with with bombs on into a wall whatever and uh it was that innovative thinking from nintendo that again just proved that no matter what they do they seem to be able to top it don't they exactly this one got a switch up score 96 percent into june then and one that uh, perhaps you wouldn't expect to to be number one for that month and it was bleak sword dx yeah this is nice to have a little one like this this was a devolver digital release it's tough to say that it is yeah it really is <laughs> um and it looks on the on the, the face of it not that impressive you know it has this really strange monochromatic art style it's set within these very small stages where you play as a, a like a knight or something that goes out on these runs but i think it was asdin reviewed this and not just here him, but most people that played it very highly rated it yeah he said it was excellent it's also nice to see the difference between months it almost mm -hmm. encapsulates what the switch is between you know the huge game of the year i'm sure for many people on the switch to a, a smaller game that people might not have even heard of you know uh this got a switch up score of 86 percent then we move into July and there was actually a tie for this month. I believe it's the only tie for any month through the year. So the first of the two games that got the highest score this month was Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. Now this is a, a very, uh, very good game. I played this first on a DS years ago and it's... I guess it's a puzzle game. Right. Like a turn-based strategy puzzle game is the best way I can describe it. Where you need to combine your units to make them stronger and then ultimately, you know, you'll, you'll count down your turns, fire towards the enemy's base or the, the, you know, the edge of their screen to do damage and obviously they're doing the same as you. And you've got offensive and defensive units that you can combine. You'll have stronger ones as you go on that you can use. This is one of the best hybrids, if you like, of, of tactics and puzzle that I've played. It was great back then. It's still great to play today and the only real um downside i guess of the switch version is that it doesn't have two screens like mm. the ds did and because of that obviously everything is on one screen it does look a little cluttered perhaps but i think that's more because i know what it could have looked like you know yeah i think we in, you introduced me to the co-op on this that also carries across really nicely and has those same mechanics that are difficult to articulate but are actually very compelling. Absolutely. And the other game for this month uh, that got the high score was Pikmin 4. Yeah. Now, Pikmin 4, I mean, the Pikmin series is great. I love the Pikmin series. Almost like a, a very cutesy RTS is, is one way of describing it, where you have the Pikmin characters that you move around stages and find whatever that game is asking you to find, and they all have their own, you know, uh, unique traits that help you. And this one also added you know, a fair few new features that, you know, fans, some fans have been asking for for a while that definitely do enhance the experience and, and make this uh, almost objectively, you know, the best of the series. Like a little dog. Like the dog, <laughs> yeah, being one of them, absolutely. <laughs> both of these uh, could have scored higher, I think. You know, a few tweets could have seen both of these score a bit higher, but still, great games, and they got 89%. August brought with it one of the most anticipated uh, indie releases in Sea of Stars. 
Um, it didn't do anything overly new, it didn't do anything I'd say particularly unique, but it did everything very, very well. It's a classic style turn-based RPG. I don't even know if they're allowed to be called JRPGs anymore, are they? I don't know what the world's doing with that. Yeah, I suppose uh, that term is, is more nostalgic these days than anything else, isn't it? The, the style has just become turn-based RPG, isn't it? You yeah, know? it really has. It tells the story of a couple of siblings who inherit a great power, and they're joined with their mate who hasn't got a great power. Oh. And it's a nice little, um, yeah, good good storytelling mechanic, that. Nice. Yeah, this is one that uh, I haven't played yet. Mm. I do have the physical version sitting there looking at me. Where did you get that from? <laughs> it was from PlayAsia, actually, oh, since my. you asked. Oh. Did I get a discount? 5%. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, no. <for> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'm only joking. It is one that, um, well, I say that actually, this is recorded after Christmas, so I may yeah. well have played it by now because it's one of my Christmas games. Hey. So, yeah, um, but fantastic game, and you gave that a switch up score of 94%. Well worth it. Then we moved into September. Um, possibly the I said weakest is not a fair word, but mm. maybe one where the releases weren't as strong as, as in some of the other months. But the highest rated game this month was a, was a game that's actually free to play, and that's F Zero Ninety Nine. Yeah, yeah, it's weird to take that that ninety nine concept. What's weird is how successful it is. Really, with yeah. different genres. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they've tried it with uh, with Mario mm -hmm. and with Tetris, and obviously now F Zero, which you know people have been asking for a new game in the series for a long time. I don't think anyone expected it to be this. No, I think people are so blooming miserable, aren't they? <laughs> they were, oh, I want a new game. They get a new game, and it's like, oh, it's not a new game. But they did take like the best tracks from it. They did create this like super um, impressive netcode with zero lag for hundred players. Come yeah. on, just enjoy the game. Yeah, definitely, and it's gonna. Be be added to yeah, as time yeah. goes on you know there's going to be free uh, free updates to it but it's just that pure adrenaline gameplay isn't it you start off and you're like yeah okay i'm not too bad at this you know and then you just <laughs> you get into a match with 100 people and you realize just how difficult it can be and as you start to get better you feel good didn't you you know well, i'm not sure i got to that stage oh keep going man you're, thank you bro. you'll be fine <laughs> i believe in you <laughs> now this is a very good game yeah nice uh, pleasant surprise and it got a switch up score of 91 percent in October, we had Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Yeah, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. So, you know, obviously 2D platforming or 2D Mario platforming, the absolute staple of, of Nintendo's repertoire has been since the early days of the company, video game-wise at least. And uh, this is, for me, this is a proper return to form mm. for Mario. On first glance, you might see a lot of similarities with this and something like the new Super Mario Bros. series, but you play it for, I don't know, 20 minutes yeah. and you can just tell, you know, that the, the level of sheen and the quality of the levels is head and shoulders above that series. The word sheen really got me. It's a good word, though. It's a great word. Charlie Sheen. It did remind me of Charlie Sheen, which is why I'm chuckling. Hot Shots Part 2. <laughs> Sheen. <laughs> that one got a switch up score of 93%. Have you said that already? No. Oh. <laughs> you, just, you just use your moment to talk about the game to talk about Charlie Sheen, that's all. But, you know, whatever. Uh, let's move on to November. So, in November then, Star Ocean Second Story R was the top rated game. As it should be. As it should be. That's just, I don't need to say anything about the game. Talk no. about Charlie Sheen then. Can, well. I, can, I, can we talk more about him? Because yeah. I do miss him, to be honest, from that last little chat we had. Um, no, Star Ocean, it, it's like we say with the Octopath when we're talking about that. It, it does its thing perfectly. And I think Star Ocean, as far as storyline, it's you can't say it's perfect, but it's perfect for me. You yeah. know, it, it really ticks all the boxes and things I enjoy. Um, I don't want to talk, we've talked so much about this recently, you know, I don't want to flog a living horse. <laughs> but if you're after a, a, jet, a classic RPG with the new Square Enix features like the visuals and things um, and a system that reminded us quite a bit of uh, Bravely Default, mm. you're going to really click with this. This got a score of 93%. Now, in December, we only reviewed one game because obviously we did our 12 Days of Switch Up series. Uh, please do give that a watch if you haven't done. But I'll, I'll tell you the score for this game, but I'm not saying for a second it kind of sits on this list with everything else. It's just to keep, uh, you know, for the sake of completion for the year. So for December, the one game we reviewed was Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince. Yeah, and as Glenn says, it does have its flaws, but I also think it's a very, very good game. Yeah. I do. I think 
It's another one like we've said in a few of these, a few little tweaks here and there and that score comes right up. It was down in the 70s because of uh, a few performance issues uh, and just a little bit on the on the, on the the sheen front <laughs> wasn't quite up to par, but the actual core gameplay, you know, I actually preferred this to the recent Pokemon and it does a lot of those same things. It's a monster collector, as the title suggests. Your main character's cursed and he can't fight monsters as you would normally do within a Dragon Quest game. Right, yeah. So he has to basically use them to fight for him. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's very cool. You, you've got basically what I class as the TARDIS. You've got this tower that you go in, and then that tower teleports to different lands. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and the lands are so varied. One of them's like a sugarcane world. One of them's um, like a the classic Halloween style. Oh, nice, yeah. Uh, and then there are tournaments within those worlds. There's a ton of content here, and there is a demo as well. So I would say try it out. But it got a switch up score of seventy nine percent. Lovely. There you go then. So that's the uh, the highest rated games for the year. Bearing in mind, obviously, December, there was just that one game. But in total, there's some great games on there, mm. aren't there, you know? Yeah, it's a cracking list. It really is. Don't forget, if you are looking to pick any of these games up or anything else, of course, you can use our website, switchup.gg, to get your eShop cards. You'll get a 5% discount in terms of coins, cash back that you can use on a future purchase, and a straight 5% if you use the code SWITCHUP. And we might as well mention PlayAsia, because we haven't mentioned that one yet. Mention it, yeah, PlayAsia. <laughs> There's a discount for that down there. There is indeed, yeah. 5% off if you want to use it. Yeah, it, does, it does help if you're picking up some of these games that don't get a release elsewhere. So, again, just one more time before we finish, thank you to Untold Tales for sponsoring this. Please do check out their sale, um, up to 90% off, as we said. Thank you for everyone that watched our 12 Days of Switch Up series. Yeah, for um, sure. It was, you know, it was great fun to make, a lot of work. It's, uh, you know, going down to the wire in terms of deadlines and whatnot, but it seems that everyone enjoyed it, mm -hmm. so that's good. And yeah, just hope you had a lovely Christmas and we'll have a happy new year in a few days' time. Brilliant. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch Up. Cheers, guys. See ya!